is a precious natural resource. And in Ventura, we're fortunate that our water supply comes from all local sources, and we want to keep it that way. So in times of drought, and to ensure our community's sustainability, it's important to look for ways not only to save water and reduce water usage, but to investigate safe, sustainable ways to meet long-term water supply demands. This past July 16th, Sustainable Ventura News attended a press conference where Ventura Water unveiled the Ventura Water Pure Potable Reuse Demonstration Facility, a pilot project for the City of Ventura, who along with other providers throughout the state, will investigate safe and sustainable ways to meet our community's future water supply demands. In this segment of Sustainable Ventura News, we talk to Ventura Water GM Shauna Epstein, and we also visit with Wastewater Utility Manager Gina Dorrington. We've actually been working on this pilot project for over a year, and prior to that we were part of a study for potable reuse on environmentally engineered buffers the year before that. Really this is all about how do we have a sustainable water supply for the long haul. We know we're always going to have different threats to our existing water supplies, and those existing water supplies are Lake Casitas, the Ventura River, and groundwater. And so we need to diversify our portfolio so that we don't have to ask people to go into allocations and save water when, when there's a hiccup in our operations or there's a dry number of years. We know all those things will happen, and we want to just diversify our water supply portfolio so we can be better prepared for the future. Well, this is a pilot study using our source water, Ventura's wastewater, as a source to go into an advanced treatment process. So it makes it unique in that it's specific to our needs. And it's an advanced treatment process taking recycled water and putting it to drinking water quality. There's some unique items that we added to the, the, to the whole process. We were added pasteurization, which isn't typical in advanced treatment. And we're also looking at alternative methods when it comes to chemical treatment versus electro treatment in our oxidation process at the UV. So there's a lot of unique processes going on within the treatment facility itself. So this is the beginning of the process. We're going to take our tertiary treated effluent and run it through the first step of pasteurization. We ran a pilot a few years ago and found out that pasteurization is a very robust method for disinfection. In this step, we're heating the water to a very high temperature for only a few seconds and killing off any viruses, bacteria, or protozoa that are in the water. When you think about pasteurization in terms of the food industry, that's been used for decades and it's the same as this. We're heating up the water for a very short period of time, killing off the bacteria, and that will offer a level of treatment, disinfection, that will help elongate the life of our filters downstream from preventing biofouling. Where the valves are, that shows the points of isolation. There are little radio-controlled sensors, and we're monitoring the flow as it goes through, temperature, everything in real time, where if something falls out of parameter, we can stop the process right away and prevent any risk to use downstream. There is a high level of automation that goes with this technology, and that, again, is what the state wants to see that's protective of human health. All these sensors are in real time and help us to respond even faster and prevent some sort of health risk downstream. This second part of our treatment process here, all those protozoa and microorganisms that we've killed off are now gonna go through an ultrafiltration process. We're removing anything that is a thousand times smaller than that of the width of a human hair and putting it through a hollow tube fiber. The water, if you picture it, is sucked out and then sent down through the process. There are about 1,000 fiber membranes in each tube. This process is batched, so if something goes wrong with one element, we can take it offline and continue to run the process. A lot of automation is involved and a lot of real-time monitoring is going on. There's a lot of sensors and sensitive equipment, and the program runs itself, it backwashes itself, it monitors itself. If something goes wrong, it will take itself offline and alert the operators, so there is no risk to downstream equipment. Our next step, after going through ultrafiltration, we are going through salt removal process. The RO unit, or reverse osmosis, is typical of water treatment that you usually see in the bottled water industry. 
This is technology that we know is proven to remove high salt water content. The water permeates material that's bound tightly into a spiral, and we need high pressure to push that water through and remove the salt. With our source that we have here in Ventura, we get about an 80% water recovery with about a 20% brine. That's a waste. As you can see, there's a long set of modules in the back. Each one of those modules has sample ports that we sample along to test the water quality and how well the equipment is working. We monitor everything, pressures, temperature, conductivity, pH. Operators come through and continually read them as well as being reported back to a chart so we can monitor and start sensing when something needs to be addressed. So this is our final barrier of treatment. It's ultraviolet light with advanced oxidation. We're taking anything that's left in the waste stream that may be harmful to public health and destroying it using UV light. Currently, this application uses hydrogen peroxide to create free radicals in the water that will attack anything that's left, denature it, and disinfect the water. The unique thing about this unit is that we know hydrogen peroxide is effective in creating that oxidation and the free radicals. This unit is also equipped with an electrical charge plate that perhaps we can take the hydrogen peroxide offline, use the electricity, and create those free radicals using the electric plate and not have to rely on chemical usage. Looking at the energy efficiency, if we have energy coming off of a turbine from the pasteurization unit, we can run an electrode plate and be just as effective and not have to use an additional chemical. Book a free tour of Ventura Water Pure. Visit VenturaWater.net and navigate to the Ventura Water Pure icon. For more information on this segment, visit SustainableVentura.tv and search Ventura Water Pure. SustainableVentura.tv for a better tomorrow.